Double jabbed UK cardiologist who says he was one of the first to get the Pfizer vaccine. Dr. Malhotra, great to see you tonight. Your reaction to what the Pfizer CEO would not answer in that back and forth, which was really a one way conversation with the rebel news reporters. Good evening, Laura. Well, I think before we uh, discuss this, I think we have to ask ourselves why we why are we even asking this question? You know, you've alluded to this at the beginning. We're dealing with one of the um, poorest efficacious pharmacological interventions with the worst safety profile, which has become the most profitable in the history of medicine. And that really sums up a system failure behind all of why we've got to this stage. Um, I've described this before as being probably the greatest miscarriage of medical science that we will witness in our lifetime. And the reason for that is, you know, we were sold on this idea. I was double jabbed. You said that correctly. Took the two jabs of the Pfizer vaccine very early on, January 2021, and then even went on Good Morning Britain to try and help tackle vaccine hesitancy because, you know, in medicine, uh, vaccines are syn synonymous with safe and effective. Uh, we all believed this was going to be as, as effective as other vaccines that we've used. And ultimately, when, uh, when we started rolling it out, very quickly, we found out that it didn't stop transmission. It didn't really have much of an effect on stopping infection. And in terms of efficacy, my own analysis found that certainly during the Delta wave, you have to vaccinate hundreds, of, uh, if not thousands of people, depending on your age, to prevent one COVID death as a best case scenario. But what's more, most concerning with all of this, uh, Laura, the most um, egregious aspect of all of this is the safety profile. So reanalysis uh, published in the journal Vaccine of Pfizer and Moderna's own trials found that the rate of serious adverse events, and we're talking about hospitalization, disability, life-changing event, was at least one in 800. That's been replicated in the real world. Norway gave a figure of about one in 926. Uh, likely, again, an underestimate, because this is just in the first few months after the vaccine. And we now have data showing that um, it's very likely that several months after the vaccine, uh, the mRNA jab is uh, ca likely causing people to have heart attacks and cardiac arrest. My own father died six months after the second jab. And when I wrote about this mm -hmm. in a peer-reviewed journal, it was accepted there was a likely possibility here. So we're dealing with something really quite extraordinary. And the question is, did Pfizer, did Albert Bourla know, right? And I find it very difficult to believe, given this independent reanalysis, that they didn't know that. Now, even if they did know it, what we know historically, Laura, is we have to accept this and understand this at the root. You know, these drug companies, pharmaceutical companies, have a legal obligation to produce profit for their shareholders. They do not have a legal requirement uh, to give you the best treatment. And the real scandals are that regulators fail to prevent misconduct by industry and that doctors, academic institutions and medical journals collude with industry for financial gain. But if you look, ever since these so-called crimes were committed, nothing changed in the system, Laura, to stop this happening again. Many of these companies end up making more profit from the marketing and sales of these fraudulent drugs in the past than they did from the fines. No one got fired. Uh, no one lost their job. And Peter Gosher, one of the co-founders well, of the Cochrane Collaboration, the BMJ, wrote not so long ago, we need to create a system, Laura, where um, the fines need to be so large that these companies risk going bankrupt and that senior executives um, could potentially face jail sentences if they are found, right, if they are found to back U.S. as yeah, in these crimes. So, yeah. yeah. Dr. Malhotra, let me just jump in. I, I think you hit the nail on the head. We've got a roll, unfortunately. But I think it's got to be a lot more than money because they have a ton of money. I think there has to be criminal liability at some point if you knew that the so-called medical intervention that your company was pushing was going to cause harm to people or could cause harm to a significant number of people without very, really any measurable benefit. That's where the rubber meets Lord. the road. And you've, you've had a lot of guts yeah. to speak out about this. Very quickly, sum up. Very quickly. Uh, one thing I think we shouldn't forget, but there's a lot of people vaccine injured. I'm having to uh, look after them as well and deal with them. It's really awful how they've been gaslighted. And I think one of the things the Pfizer CEO can do maybe to redeem himself a little bit in all of this is to say, we are going to give a considerable amount of our profits to helping treat the vaccine injured and do research into vaccine injuries. That's an 
excellent point because there are a lot of people I personally know who are hurting from the booster or uh, multiple shots. Dr. Malhotra, thank you for speaking.